Yeah, thank you for <clears throat> being me here. Um, if anyone had doubts about the relative nature of uh, terminology, that was a very good example to speak about full Mesolithic. And now I'm going to take you in the full Neolithic, and still we are in the sixth millennium uh, BC. <clears throat> uh, the so-called Danubian route uh, might be uh, a notion for some of you, especially those who made the, this morning session uh, in the other room, where uh, this, uh, uh, this map of Europe uh, must have been shown at least five times. So <laughs> for those people, it is familiar. But now, uh, that's a big migration to place that's uh, more or less evident now uh, also uh, with uh, many different facets it is it is clear but the question is now what happened in the aftermath so this this was the focus it was a migration and what happened at the time and right before it we are in the uh, area of, of the birth of the LBK, which is considered to be the first farmers in Europe. Um, you can see that there is a kind of, 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 of uh, central zone uh, with the last region. I don't know whether you can see my mouse. You can? No? No. Okay. Then I'm coming here. <clears throat> so uh, this is the last region with direct migrants and the first region where uh, you have the Central European LBK. What happened here was a kind of formation phase where migrants, uh, Balkan farmers participated, but, and for this we have more and more evidence, also local foragers shaped the history of uh, uh, the, the, uh, the transition and hence also shaped the history of uh, the uh, first farmers of the vast regions of Europe. No. The um, chronological sequence can be seen here. Uh, for time reasons, I'm sticking with Transdanubia, that is the, the western part of the Carpathian Basin, but this, this is where the most important things happened. And you can see at the Lake Bolaton, which is uh, the largest lake in Central Europe, that was the cradle of, of uh, well, the whole region was the cradle of these uh, shifts. And uh, you can see that we are uh, in the second part of the sixth millennium and the time when the big migration, big uh, distribution to uh, Central Europe happened was no earlier than 500, BC. Um, of course, there is a traditional view on that, based on mainly pottery, uh, to a lesser extent on lithics. And uh, we are not throwing these evidence, these pieces of evidence out of the window, because these are important. But of course, we, we try to um, bolster or question them with as many facets of, of uh, partly new evidence as possible. So we are kind of combining everything that we have in our hands in order to uh, come to an interpretation. Uh, two uh, projects uh, were especially helpful in the last, uh, let's say, 10-12 uh, years with that. Uh, first of all, there was a um, large uh, German-Hungarian uh, project uh, targeting uh, practically uh, getting as much uh, ADNA from Neolithic skeleton, uh, skeletal samples uh, as possible. That means 700. Later on, we also did the autosomal version, uh, the, new, the new generation uh, sequencing of these. But I have to, uh, I, I hasten to say that this was an archaeologist's based project and not a merely a DNA project before hearing your critical voices. Uh, the second one was a precise uh, and uh, with Bayesian uh, statistical modeling uh, evaluated uh, C14 radiocarbon chronology that was an ERC project where I was responsible for the Hungarian part which originally uh, was about 10% of the whole project and it ended up at, at nearly 50% so it was a big job but it helped uh, tremendously to uh, set all the facets the uh, the type of chronology of the finds uh, the bioarchaeological the anthropological data with uh, decade precise chronology um, to 
make it sure uh, what are the traditional phases of the LBK. I put four charts. Uh, some of them are still valid, like this one, which, which is about the formative, the, the birth of the LBK. As you can see in the middle of uh, the Western Trans, uh, Tra uh, Carpathian Basin, uh, and there is an overlap uh, in between the migrant uh, Balkan farmers called Starcevo, based on a uh, Serbian site, uh, and uh, the, the, the kind of first uh, attempt uh, how, how to, be, how to be behave as an LBK, as a, as a, as a first uh, uh, European farming community, and that was roughly at the middle of the 6th millennium BC. The next phase is the spread of the phase, and everybody is looking about uh, for, for, for the northwest along the Danube Valley, uh, because it's so uh, spectacular uh, to, to see that uh, in, a, in, in a, just in a time, a couple of generations, um, the LBK farmers spread over practically uh, all the less areas from the Paris Basin till uh, Lesser Poland or the Ukraine. But, uh, the truth is that there was also an extension to the south, and you can see um, their, their, uh, their distribution southwards to the southern edge of the Carpathian Basin, where, as you can see here in this uh, darker part, uh, a very strong impact reached them from the northern Balkans again and again, and that also shaped the later history of the 6th millennium BC. The real aftermath is then, as, as you can see, uh, a repeating rhythm of, of uh, uh, becoming different uh, uh, customs uh, and, and uh, 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 settlement patterns and material culture in the northern part, which is partly to be thanked about this Balkan impact and partly to be thanked about more, and I'm going to tell you some more words about that in a few minutes, some more local forager impact in the north. And lastly, the final phase, which leads us uh, almost to the 5th millennium BC and shapes the next new formation, the Lendial culture, which is a kind of um, um, falling apart of, of, of small local groups, uh, which probably have uh, their um, uh, uh, quite a, a long range of reasons, but they all contribute in a way, uh, in, a, in a very compound way, uh, to the end of the LPK world and to the birth of late Neolithic with uh, much copper in the end. Uh, about networks, which was one of the driving forces, both of the spread and also in the previous periods, actually in the pre-Neolithic times, we have evidence for this red radiolorite uh, uh, source in the north of the Balaton region uh, that uh, appeared to be a kind of uh, very precious thing uh, to, <clears throat> uh, to look for, uh, to trade with or to exchange with and to network with. The first evidence of this red radiolarite in southern Moravia goes back to Mesolithic times. And all the time, uh, it was one of the driving forces uh, getting, we find this lithic base, uh, lithic uh, cores and also the instruments, the flints, uh, all over uh, Europe. The formative phase of the LBK it can be shaped, and we know it from a, uh, an excavation about 20 years ago, by a, a, an, 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 a tremendous amount of, of local foragers, uh, which, which is visible through the uh, ongoing flint sources and types, so it, actually it's a pre-Neolithic pre tradition. About the, the Balkan pottery coming from uh, from uh, the northern edges of the Balkan, and from uh, a, a complete LBK architecture, but I put the LBK buildings, this is fraction into a question mark or in, into a quotation mark, because uh, we have more and more evidence that the LBK buildings, the LBK longhouses, were invented by the sp late Starchable people in the northern Balkans. So they took this uh, kind of knowledge with them. And so it was a kind of, 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 of merging with local habits and that was shaping uh, the LBK. Uh, looking north will be the next phase, but before that I would like to, you to uh, take a, 
a bit southwards. You can see these different uh, colors. The red one is a big, big formation in the northern Balkans called Vincho culture, and the yellow one is one facies of it, but actually they are all southern impacts reaching, so to say, attacking the southern part of uh, Transdanubia, and it caused uh, an, an, a very interesting kind of mingle. I, I'm not calling it hybridization because if you if you talk about hybrid things, you have to define what is A and what is B. But at this case, you are unable to do that uh, because uh, very many uh, if, uh, customs and also facets in the material culture are undistinguishably uh, different. For instance, just to give you an example from the early phase of the Vincho culture, uh, those who have seen uh, uh, maps about Albuquerque longhouses can see uh, that these are the long trenches along the houses. So they are genuine, so to say, Central European Albuquerque longhouses at the Drava region, that is the southern edge of the, uh, uh, of the Carpathian Basin. Yet, uh, some facets of the barriers, but perhaps even more importantly, the material culture uh, is Vinja, is genuine Vinja. So with archaeological notions, we can say that they are not imports, they were made locally. So Vinja people lived in the LBK longhouses. So how is that possible? One uh, 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 part of the explanation that we think that the LBK house was a starchable invention and get both the Vinja and both the, uh, and the LBK go back um, to, uh, uh, to starchable roots. So if they had this knowledge about this kind of architecture, it's very clear that they just distributed it further uh, along vast regions of Europe. A phase later, uh, we are now in the last uh, two centuries of uh, the sixth millennium BC, yet another push from a very strong impact from uh, the south reached uh, the Transdanubian region, uh, which came along with people. These people, as you can see, are uh, not the, uh, the normal Neolithic way of burials, but these people <clears throat> are just lying on their back. They are more robust. And very interestingly, they have uh, customs like this uh, chap lying in a rib of, uh, of, of a cattle. So totally alien things for the Carpathian Neolithic. And interestingly, uh, in these grave groups, everyone with red and yellowish uh, color had a very strong local Mesolithic ancestry. So these people came from uh, the, the southern mountains, south of the Carpathian Basin. They must have been local groups who mingled, merged into this uh, Albuquerque community, so to say. If we <clears throat> make one step southwards of it and look at the other, the Croatian part of the Drava, we find a mess, I have to say. So with all due respect uh, to the uh, Croatian colleagues, the poor uh, colleagues were also setting out of the typochronology with different pottery styles, thinking that they must be different groups in a chronological order. Uh, very few C14 dates underpin their uh, hypothesis, which is a pity. Uh, it is now uh, improving and growing. But uh, basically, uh, you can find here late starchable, Albike, Vinja, Sopot, Malokoranovo, Raziste, whatsoever, local groups, which are named by local archaeologists. And nobody can see the big picture uh, saying that this is a kind of, 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 of total uh, emerged society, whereas different people, different households uh, hold their habits, and uh, this is important for them, but they appreciate each other. So these were peaceful periods without, uh, without having one unique style in one face. Now, uh, approaching the real, real LBK region, uh, the, the traditional picture was that the different pottery styles must uh, represent different phases of the pottery. Here is a big uh, site, whereas the early phase was just not very densely settled, uh, but the later phase was a very big uh, uh, kind of settlement with many houses. And you can see that the, the, the pottery styles marked with different colors. That was the original picture of the excavator and publisher a group that uh, these are phases. The same people, just a few years later, excavated yet another settlement in the same region, in the genuine LBK region. And they had to see 
uh, that very surprisingly, uh, these faces that they uh, uh, made a very nice and neat order to, uh, or put this order to, uh, coming in one household together, coming in, in various facets of the sa very same settlement together. You can see here the different colors, which means that in one settlement, uh, half and half, four, uh, purely just one group, uh, three groups, uh, three pottery styles merging. So actually, um, we can get rid of this uh, kind of typochronology at this phase because it's it simply it, it doesn't say anything. It just says that with uh, uh, very different traditions lived on and on uh, between households within settlement uh, types, and they were completely merging uh, due to the networks, due to the contact. It will be very interesting to see what uh, the ADNA and the bioarchaeology can say to this. <clears throat> so, uh, the first picture shows, we are still in Transdanubia, that the so-called u haplo uh, types, that is uh, up here, in the northern part of Transdanubia, that is uh, along the Danube Valley to Austria, uh, reach the 10%. In the south, it is less, in spite of the small impetuses from uh, the Sopot people and so on. Uh, if I want to just show it very briefly what happened in the Neolithic, you can see that the uh, original hunter-gatherer uh, picture of ancestry changes profoundly with the arrival of the first farmers. But yet, in the, in, in the next phases of the Neolithic, which means that the second part of the 6th millennium BC, uh, especially with the Vinjo and Sopot uh, inputs from the Balkans, but also in the north, in those in Transanubia, reaches the 10-15%. So it's a slow but, but, but constant growing, uh, for which earlier the archaeological traces were not found, but now we are finding more and more evidence for this kind of invisible presence of the uh, of the locals contributing to the shaping uh, of these 500 years I'm talking about. About mobility, uh, just uh, uh, looking at the stabilized slope analysis, uh, I'm not going to speak about east, the eastern part of the Carpathian Basin because I'm running out of time. Uh, so concentrating on the most important area, but just for comparison, you can see that the mobility was, was twice as strong and intensive uh, in the western part in Transdanubia than in the east. Uh, the newest research, which, is, uh, which will be published in a month, I, I hope, uh, reflects the same story that the number of the site-specific, uh, the micro-regional uh, re uh, and the uh, incoming, so the non-local populations or individuals, are in Transdanubia uh, much stronger in all uh, categories. That means on the large scale, on the regional level, and also uh, more migrants are coming than in, in, in the eastern part of the Carpathian Basin. We have a hypothesis about the reasons, but uh, I'm just uh, just saying one sentence about it, not more, because I don't have the time for that. Now we are at the, at the um, at the northern part of the Carpathian Basin, and now let's have a short outlook to the northwest. So where did they end up? They went along the Danube Valley, reaching eastern Austria, Moravia, which is the South Bohemian part, the southern Germany, and so on and so on. Here is a settlement uh, near Vienna called Brunn, which is especially important from all these points of view because it starts at the formative phase and it goes all along uh, practically during the uh, uh, un un until the end of the sixth millennium. Um, genuine LBK, we didn't know anything about the uh, local input in this culture. And a new article published in 19 uh, shed light about the very interesting proportions. Three individuals were investigated with, uh, with whole uh, genome analysis. And it looked like one individual was totally Anatolian of origin. So it, it had migrant ancestors. One person born locally, not a migrant from somewhere else, was totally hunter-gatherer. 
and the third individual was a complete mixture. That, that means that uh, originally uh, the contact between locals and, uh, and, and, and uh, the first farmers must have been there, but for some reason it is possible that they didn't genetically mingle. That means no marriages. Uh, there are a plethora of, of ethnographic examples uh, for reasoning this, uh, that might be true, might be not, this is, this is uh, something for the future. But, interestingly, at this phase, at, the, at this northern part of the Carpathian Basin, it is already happening. And that it will, uh, that's, that's a first sign uh, where my next example shows that it, it is uh, extending. This site, Vedrovice, uh, is in southern Moravia, so a bit further north and west of Brunn where the first phase of the settlement evidently comes from Transdanubian migrants. So a group of, uh, so to say, uh, 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 leapfrog communities that jumped into this uh, very nice ambient and, uh, and built up their first village. In the next phase, it must have, been, must have attracted locals from the, uh, from, from the surrounding mountains who started to move in and that altered, that changed uh, the whole nature of the LBK settlement to a great extent, up to the extent that the uh, burial customs changed completely. In the first phase, in Transdanubian phase, uh, the uh, skeletons were buried within the settlement. Having uh, the local foragers married into the community in a few generations, they started to build up a complete different cemetery outside of the settlement with partly different customs. So I'm just drawing the attention of, of peaks, of small things, which you can put together in your mind, and in the end, you will end up with a, with a picture that is, a, that is a, a altering the, the traditional typochronological one. Uh, and also changing the ADNA picture, because as you can see, uh, it's none of it. It's a kind of combination, it's kind of an integration of the two kinds of evidence. Finally, a few words about possible reasons. So what on earth did they find so interesting along the Danube Valley to, uh, to uh, uh, reach vast areas of Europe within just a few generations? Uh, the dark side, the dark spot is the early phase and the greatest extension, as you can see from France to Ukraine, um, is uh, the developed phase of the LBK. If you put it like this, you can see the three peaks the, 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 the first farmers uh, reached into Europe. What are these three peaks? What are the three regions? These are the most renowned and uh, uh, until today uh, very famous salt regions at the northern edge of the Luss area. What does this tell us? Salt must have been a very uh, valuable commodity. They lacked it in the Western Carpathian Basin because the last uh, uh, salt mine was in Tuzla in Macedonia, which they uh, forgot and left because they looked uh, quite another direction. But it also tells us that they did not know, uh, they did not move uh, just like in the unknown, just like uh, having an adventure, but they targeted the, uh, looked for resources they lacked, and they left their Transdanubian radiolite flints, which might have been something in, in, given in return. If uh, you put these uh, uh, facets of, of evidence together, then uh, you can see that uh, until the birth of, of the next big uh, culture formation. It is it, it's every, anything else you can call that, but not a revolution. You can call that integration. You can call that reshuffling. You can call that, call that restructuring, uh, mingling, merging, maybe even hybrid, hybridity, but I'm very cautious with that notion. Um, it is a very complex phenomenon, but the outcome is quite clear. Just one example. Finally, uh, as you can see, Bad Nauheim Nieder Merlin is in northwestern Germany, is uh, more than 1,200 kilometers from uh, our formative phase. And there are the pottery shirts, there are the Transdanubian radiolarite parts. And Bad Nauheim, 
as you get, you know, from the Celtic period is one of the largest salt mines also for the Romans of the Celtic and Roman periods in their Iron Age. So just one example for that. Uh, of course, uh, we can find uh, several more things to prove that uh, the Lendial culture, which I'm not going to say a word about because it's the fifth millennium and it's the next phase, was shaped by these southern impacts coming from the northern Balkans, the local foragers having their impacts, and this constant reshaping and restructuring. Donny Hoffman uh, had an article where uh, she called uh, this kind of mobility uh, while well, scrutinizing in more uh, northerly German LBK sites as uh, uh, shaped by personal mobility, a reiterated mobility of smaller group, a constant moving, and uh, of course the provenience of uh, the raw materials are also very important indicators for archaeologists, for us. So putting all together and trying to find the kind of answer of the after, questions of the aftermath. So how did it look like? It was not kind, uh, any kind of revolutionary, but it was a very complex, and I think to my mind it's a very human history, because uh, everything we see is that uh, not everything is complex and, and with very many facets. Now I tried to show some of these facets, and that said, I think that these uh, uh, next orbit is shaped by the previous 500 years of the LPK history. And so I'm done. Thank you. Thank you.